blood and guts fight coming to this. Did you get what you came for here today? I got what I came for, and I knew Ryan Scope would give it to me. A blood and guts war, that's where I'm best, and I'm, I couldn't be happier with how that went. If I'd have won that clean, I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. How close were you to being finished with that head kick? You went down after the head kick, looked like there were a couple of strikes on the ground, and for a second it looked like you might have been out for a split second. Not close. You won't. You can't finish me. That's it. I can't. I, whenever I, I won't be finished. I just refuse to be finished. That's. You don't get finished in fighting. You give up. That's what happens. And I won't give up. I was just there. I could. Fi I was hurt bad, but I wasn't close to being finished. No way. You know, he got you through the moment at the end of the fight of the cage with, with Conor McGregor, and what it meant to have him there for you tonight. Everything. He's one of my best friends. Um, it's just nice to share these moments with your best friends. But I had many moments tonight backstage with Artem and, and all my other friends. Just Connor, he always steals the headlines, but I, I've many close friends that I've uh, gained through this sport. And I'm just, that's the best thing I've got through this sport is my friends. Peter, there's many shades of Carl Pinter there with the, the comeback and, you know, the crowd get behind him, the crowd get behind you. Oh, you know, how much are you quite cognizant of the crowd getting behind you in that situation where you're almost finished your comeback? Yeah, huge. I, I, I was really hurt bad. And, um, I was in Mount and I was just trying to stay alive. I could hear that ole, 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 ole. And if I, if I needed any more inspiration to, to keep fighting, that was it. So it did play a big part. Can you describe what was going through your head when you were on the ground and how did you summon the strength and perseverance to muster that comeback? I just, I, I, I can't, I, I would, I would, I would not be able to live myself if I, if I gave up. That's what happens when you, when you get finished in that manner, when it's a TKO, you're not being knocked out, you're giving up, you're kind of relenting and, 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 and just giving up. And that's just not in me. If, if I did that, I would just break my heart, it would break me forever. So I couldn't do it, I just can't do that. How satisfying a win was it? I mean, with the home crowd, with Connor jumping up beside you, what was that like, the whole experience? Amazing, it was just a very satisfying. Ryan beat Pitbull in his last fight. Um, so I have to tip my hat to Ryan as well. He gave me the kind of fight that the fans deserved here. Um, like he came, he fought me, he, he wasn't afraid. He kind of thought about taking me down the first round. I was hurting him a bit, but he, he fought then. He, he, he mustered himself and he came back in the second and hurt me. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to Ryan for coming in here and, and, and putting on a proper fight because I have a habit of make, making people not fight. They, they get hit by me and they, they start kind of shelling up and not shelling up, but start trying to bring the, start trying to wear the clock down. Um, so, so, fair play to Ryan. Um, he's a really good fighter and I respect him a lot. Fighters talk about those small percentages. Can you quantify what the crowd brought to your performance today? Yeah, it's just you. That that was. It. I, I thought it wouldn't be topped from the from the last time, but it was. It was just insane. It was. There was a, the noise was the same, but the energy was just felt like more. Felt like I can't even describe it. G could probably describe it better than me. You were listening, but I was just kind of focusing on Ryan, but. It was just it seemed mad to be honest. It just didn't seem real to be honest. Peter, yeah. after the Moyles fight and the fact that it was all up in the air and the fact that you didn't have the closure that you wanted in this fight, how good did it feel to have such a, a devastating finish here with the crowd? You know, the crowd you were speaking the last time saying you wanted to give them something. Is this exactly what you wanted to give them? Yeah, that's this is what I wanted to happen in the Moyles fight. And I thought Moyles, this is what he wanted. He's a kickboxer, he strikes normally, but as I said, when you when you go at me, you turn into a wrestler normally. And that's what happened Miles, and I was disappointed in him. He had a chance to, to win some fans that night and, and impress Bellator and, and become, be that. Ryan's not gonna go down in stock from that performance at all. Do you know what I mean? And Miles had that chance and he, he bottled it to be honest. And like, respect to Miles, there is respect there. Um, you know, whatever, he's doing what he's doing. I can see he's trying to better himself over an AK. That's, that's fine, I, I don't really have anything against Miles anymore. But you know, I felt like he, he left, um, he missed an opportunity that night. You said uh, that Ryan had thrown the flag well for all the Europeans against Patricky. You want to test yourselves against the top names in this division. Is there anyone there that you could really think of that you'd like to fight now, or the US kind of guys at lightweight? Yeah, I owe Terry Brazier a fight, I know that, so I need to, you know, he's matched, so that would be probably next year. Um, I want to slap the head off Chris Bungard. So that's that's kind of a that's more of a personal vendetta more than a step up. And other than that, then just any of them US names. I wouldn't mind fighting for Tricky, but he's kind of tight. a lot of them are tied up. That's why I'm kind of thinking about Bungar because a lot of them big names are are tied up with this tournament and things. And Patricio is tied up in the tournament. And so yeah, we'll see what happens. There's talk of me fighting in London even before this. So I think I'll fight there. I'm not that hurt. My hands a bit sore. My bit bruised up, but I'm not hurt.
What was the exchange with uh, Ryan on the on the cage after the fight? You know, you had a had a little embrace and had a little exchange there. What, give us a bit of insight into what was said there. I thought you were going to say what was the exchange in Mount because I was talking there as well, and he was like, I was so hurt, and I was like, I kind of gained a little bit of composure, and I got him over, and I was like, ah, we're fighting now, I said to him, he was like, ah, and he elbowed me then, I was like, fuck, I better not stop talking now, but uh, at the end of the fight then, I just said, he's, um, I believe he's the best fighter I've ever, I've ever fought, him or David Kachatrian in Russia, he was a very high level Russian, he wouldn't be known here, but I believe Ryan is the most high level fighter I've fought, he's right up there, as he, as he showed against Patricky, he beat Patricky, he beat him, fair and square he didn't get the nod that night but he did beat him um, so I just I just told him he's an amazing fighter and th I thanked him for how he fought because that's what the crowd wanted you talk an awful lot you know online and stuff about your mentality and you know getting through those struggles is that the sort of thing that you know that you get through in just normal it'll help you through something tonight when you can see you know the mentality comes through and you just get through that war like you did yeah I, 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 I've um, for good or bad I, I've experienced a lot of heavy heavy sparring in my, in my career just by the nature of who my training partners are like Connor and Artem and we just go at it it's not for the faint hearted when, when we spar and um, there's there's different viewpoints on that whether it's good for your career or bad for your career but that's what happens when you're used to that you don't wilt other fighters who, who haven't been tested like that Ryan would have finished 95% of, of fighters there and that's a fact but not me because I'm I, I have my training partners to thank for that and that's where my, my mental toughness comes from it's adversity and, and, and putting yourself in those positions um, that, you know, develop that mentality of, of never giving up. You talk about the, uh, the Irish fans and obviously, the, you know, the atmosphere here was electric for your fight. Tell me about the emotions that were going through your head once you got in the cage. You were the first man out for this fight. Yeah, that was unusual. Wasn't it? You had, uh, you, you know, you had your music playing, the cranberries. They stopped the music for Ryan's walkout, but then the crowd picked oh, it up right. and then kicked out. <laughs> I didn't hear it stop. What, what, you know, what was sort of coursing through you at that, at that point? You know, Ryan's making his walk and then the crowd is going mad. Pride. Irish pride. I couldn't have... I just, I was overwhelmed with a sense of pride. I just... There's, there's not many people who will ever experience what I've experienced there and I'm, I'm so lucky to have experienced that. Um, Ah, I don't know, just pride, and just couldn't believe it to be honest. Just how much people support us, all of us, every fighter in Ireland. It's, it's, there's no, there's no. I've been to many fights in all over the world, and there's never an atmosphere anywhere than in this arena. You know, and it's just a testament to the fans and how they get behind their own fighters. And just to answer your question, pride, pride.